Arrivederci. No, okay, I'm gonna kill you. Let me make a pen for my new horse and I'll get right to you guys. All non-Americans follow me as the government would like to say, we don't appreciate your kind on these lands, fellers. Yes, officer, I swear, they were resisting arrest. Please apprehend them. I said them, not me. Today my son asked, can I have a bookmark? And I burst it into tears. <laughs> 11 years old and he still doesn't know my name is Brian. Now have a seat everyone and grab some snacks. Let me tell you about the time I survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. So back to day zero and this time it's about location, location, location. I needed to find a nice spot to build my house so I can begin my Emerald Empire money scheme business. And this time I was going to play it safe, so I made a bed immediately. This was my sixth time attempting this, and I wasn't gonna go for another. So my first day was like anyone else's first day. I just spent it getting resources. Then the next five days, I decided to clear out my land. I wanted to be able to see danger around my house without them having any cover. So bye bye to the hills around my house, a flat plateau was in style this year. But on day seven, I was getting tired of my lungs being filled with clean oxygen, so... I decided it was time to return to what I was born in. Heavily polluted air. I wanted to get iron tools and armor as fast as possible. Contrary to popular belief, death isn't nice, so I didn't want to experience it again. And day 9 gave me numb flashbacks. I saw a skeleton outside my door in sunlight, which he also tried to get in. But I gotta say, I handled it like a man. Hello? Hello? But looking around, I knew I'd have to get rid of this forest. I just cleared out the land to be safe, and these trees were making it unsafe. Besides, who even needs trees in the world? I was so traumatized by the skeletons though, so I just went back to mining. As you can all tell by now, nothing can faze me anymore. I collected a lot of sand. I had a brilliant idea that I wanted to do for my mine shaft. Even wanted to give you guys a spook. It was all going well until the lava gain plus 90 reach and hit me somehow. Honestly, reminded me of my grandfather, but I was never worried. Being the Bill Gates of this world, I couldn't live in a garbage shack anymore. So, for this day, I just spent it sprucing up the place. Also, switched out the ceiling for glass. I like to see the sky when I'm down in the mine so I know when I can fall asleep. Day 12 was kind of exciting. I wanted to continue renovating my house and finish it today, but I needed more wood. While I was cutting though, I heard this very strange sound. I haven't played Minecraft in many years, so I'm new to all of this stuff now, but I vaguely remember that sound from my last attempt. So, I wanted to play it safe and I ran into my house. Immediately at my back window, I saw them. The strange looking non-native people to my lands. I figured I was safe, so I just finished renovating inside my house. 13 and 14 were boring, I just mined a bit and cleared out the forest around my house. Now everything should hopefully be safe. Day 15 and I wanted to explore today. I remembered there was a village behind my house, so I thought it was about time to introduce myself to my future slick business partners. Once I got there though, wow, it was really small and bad. It only had two villagers and one was locked in his house since I created this world. But I think I was lucky to have a Fletcher for one, so I did what any landlord slash government would. I locked him indefinitely in his house until I was ready to move them over to my compound. Next four days were boring. I desperately needed some iron. No matter how much I mine, I just could never find any resources. So I decided to branch off of one of my tunnels and I found a cave. And would you look at that, I finally found some iron. And now a creeper's greatest weakness, I made a shield. About time I start to care about my safety. Today I just worked on creating a farm. I don't want to have to keep on killing all those fish in the river next to my house anymore for food. I want to stockpile up and have an abundance now. Plus, I might find a village farmer in the future and it wouldn't hurt to start stockpiling up on tradable items. I finished off half the farm today and began making a wall. Being a solid 10 out of 10, I figured I needed more security. I began to light up my complex and wait until night to finish it off. Oh, and I started a pumpkin farm. Being America's number one heartthrob though, I figured I should give my fangirls a present, you know, just to make them happy. Started off day 22 with a lengthy dude trying to give me a heart attack. After he left, I went out and began building a hut for my pumpkin patch. It was just another relaxing day, and I wanted to make my compound look nice. I had to happily go kill Nemo's cousins and friends. I was preparing for a long journey across the land. After acquiring a small amount of fish, I began my journey, which I immediately found a sunken ship with some okay loot. Nothing too crazy. The next day, though, I encountered my first drowned, who guarded a whopping one emerald. Afterwards, I found a ship with more loot. I wanted to travel across the land now to see what the world had to offer, and out of the sandy deserts, I found a village, which I immediately stole wheat from to acquire currency. It felt fantastic. 
26 was just filled with two more sunken ships and okay loot. Nothing much to see here. Day 27 was more action-packed, though. I encountered a literal child wielding a trident five times his body size. Obviously quickly aborted the 84-month-old fetus. Afterwards, I accidentally found a clever trap with a magma block and the drowned being sucked into it. It was quite enjoyable if I'm being honest. Day 28, I was brave enough to skydive into an underwater building, of which I immediately swam away from because of another trident wielding drowned. Over the hill though, I saw two snow villages. I of course stole all of their lanterns though, couldn't be bothered to cop them myself, besides the resident wouldn't be needing them anymore. The next day, I just did the same thing to the other village. Day 30, I found this peculiar tower. I decided to go and investigate it, which I immediately found out it was home to the villagers. I killed a few dozen of them before realizing they were infinitely spawning, so I just looted their tower, which was garbage. After escaping the slow pillagers, I found a witch's hut. I was kind enough to give her a nice warm bath, she reeked of serfdom. After my charity work, I began to return home, my inventory was too full now. Of course though, I found a village on my way home, and I wanted to continue my charity work, so I freed this cat from another witch. Nearly home and I found these strange stone blocks in the forest. Still no idea what they're for or from, but after three days of running, I finally made it back home. I spent the rest of the day putting stuff away and adding new crops to my farm that I gathered along in my adventure. Day 34 and I just wanted to rest, so I expanded my land, you can never have too many acres, which continued into the next day. After a bit more terraforming on day 36, I noticed something while farming. These composters can recycle organic items. Terraform this day. Day 38 started off exciting, a traveling villager came to my compound. Luckily he gave me two leads, so of course I trapped his annoying llamas and him in cages. While terraforming though, the pillagers came back. I guess they really wanted to die, so I obliged. After waking up, I said hello to my roommate and got back to terraforming. Day 40 was the exact same thing. Day 41 was exciting, I finally made a diamond pick. While in the mines, I heard a UFO ship down there. Then about four blocks into a wall, I found a nice cave, which had diamonds for me. And I began collecting obsidian. After a while, I collected 20 blocks of it. And then I continued to explore the cave for a while. Next day, I wanted to begin my sugarcane farm. So I just gathered the required materials and began building it. The following day, I gathered the rest of the supplies I needed and collected some animals to begin my future farm. Day 44, I finally finished constructing my sugarcane farm and then I just expanded my wall to fit the new parts of my land, which I finished on the next day. Afterwards, I finally created some pens for my animals, which I spoiled them with lanterns. Only have cows and sheep so far. While I was sending to my farm, however, I felt like there had to be a more efficient way to recycle all of my organic items. So, I played around a little bit and made this auto composter, which worked, but would stop when I needed to collect a bone meal. Day 47 was a bit of fun. I made the auto composter fully automated so I wouldn't even have to touch it now. I then gathered every type of farm animal I need, so I decided to go slaughter a ton of animals around my compound since I wouldn't be needing them anymore. But night fell and I decided to have some fun and turn my blade onto the hostile mobs. While returning home though, I saw some skeletons with enchanted bows. I wanted to see if I could collect them. Honestly, wasn't even worried. With my massive brain, I calculated everything down to the last pixel of health I'd need. Sadly though, the next day the enchanted bows weren't dropped. Can I please get an F in the comments for that? Afterwards, I just did some farm work around the house and went to the village for some arrows. Through the night, I collected two horses. I have to say, I think they're really fond of me. I then went to gather lily pads to cover up the water on my farm so items wouldn't fall into them anymore. I did the same thing on day 50. For this day, I wanted to expand my land and terraform a bit. I had an idea for a large building. After cooking a ton of cobblestone, I crafted the fine bricks that the large building would rest upon and began building, which I did over the course of the next two days. But I had to stop because I needed to remove part of the hill next to my building because I needed to expand the building one more slot to make it all even. Then, when I ran out of the fancy bricks, I just went to farming for the rest of the day. I needed more cobblestone for the large building though, so over the course of the next four days, I just spent at all strip mining and gathering more rock. Then on day 61, I finally hit through to a cave, something I rarely get on this world. 
I found some diamonds and killed some skeletons. I figured I had enough cobblestone, so I just returned to my furnaces to prepare for the next time I build. Six of two was just spend farming and taking care of my animals. Except, my farm is so massive that I had to finish the rest of it on the next day and then went back to building. Day 64, I finally finished the outline for the large building. The next day I needed to go gather some wood for the large building's floor. I cut down so many trees from the forest though that I think tree.org is gonna come hunt me down now. But at least I finished most of the floor. I wanted some nice lighting around the large building, and frankly, my animals don't deserve all the nice lanterns. While I was building my nice lighting though, the traveling villager that escaped me somehow came back. His trades were garbage, so I thought it was only fair for me to kill his llamas and take his leads. For this large building, I wanted to design it to be open, no doors. I was getting tired of having to open and close them from my tiny shack home. Afterwards, I began to prepare to enter the nether. It was time for more fun. Day 69, stop laughing. I finally went to the nether. I was immediately welcomed with open arms. Upon saying thank you to my warm welcomes, I noticed lava was still falling down from the ceiling. Very happy I noticed it right there and not a few seconds later. I just went straight away to collecting the blocks I wanted and baby proofing my portal, or at least as much as I could. After that, I went back to collecting the blocks I needed. Until I had my soul scared out of my body from randomly catching on fire. Finally, I found the culprits, but they quickly ran away. I then spent the next 10 minutes gathering up more blocks I wanted and baby proofing the land as I returned my portal. Upon returning home, though, I was surprised with a guest that I didn't want. Very lucky for me, he returned back through the portal to his wife and kids. Since I came back so late, there was no point in sleeping, so I just began adding to the walls. Don't worry, there's going to be many iterations of it. Then my old pals came back and I decided to go say hello to them. I finally got a second banner from my pumpkin patch, but I noticed that there was only three pillagers, not four. So I kept a lookout for the fourth one, of which I immediately found the next day and took care of him. But of course my fun can end there. While I was farming, another raiding party spawned in my compound somehow? I guess I heard about my FPS skills and wanted more. After seeing how unsafe my land was still, I decided to baby-proof everything. It was time to create something. I gathered the supplies and I made two iron golems to help out with guarding my land. Now I think my land is safe enough. After that, it was time for more quartz. So I entered the nether, considered going into the fortress, and immediately began gathering quartz. Then out of nowhere, a gas started to attack, and then suddenly despawned? After that, I just went back to gathering a lot more quartz. I wanted to try and make this my last trip in here for materials. I then started to explore. It's been a long time since I played in the nether, and I wanted to see what changed and what the environment is like now. More and more gathering of quartz can never have too much. And then that disappearing gas came back and did his magic trick again. Returning back to my portal now, I wanted to baby-proof the land some more, and I barely escaped some lava, like a few pixel difference on how close I was to catching on fire, but I managed to baby-proof more of the lava. My adventure itch wasn't done yet, though. I wanted to go explore some of the nether fortress. I wanted to see if it was an actual one. Of course, though, I just had to go the hard way and baby-proof this lava entirely. I couldn't just do the base of it, but I did make it look good, though, if I do say so myself. Now, onto the fortress. It was actually beautiful in a legit nether fortress, so I decided to venture deeper. Then I saw him, another blaze. This time he wouldn't run from me. With my navy seal sniper training, he fell. Down the stairs, officer, I, I swear. Baby proofed more lava, and then I saw it, my first blaze rod. I ventured deeper and saw a blaze spawner, so I immediately ran away. Then I immediately turned around and went back. I was getting badly damaged, so I turned to heal. I came right back and luckily lit up the spawner. With only three hearts remaining, I quickly made a dash right back to my portal. My adventure here was done, for now. Once I was home, I was on my phone and didn't notice my fourth party of visitors. So I just went back to building and tending to my animals. I wanted to get into enchanting, so the cows had to die. Not all of them though. But finally my enchanting table was done. Day 74, I was beginning to prepare for my future villagers. Upon gathering items I needed to make a breeding ground for them, one of my iron golems decided to get up close and personal with my chickens. Once I got him out, he wasn't done apparently, and decided to go say hello to the cows. Of course, getting him out though, four of the cows escaped. I slaughtered the children and mother that got out right in front of the golem. I wanted him to see what his actions caused. Once I fixed that chaos, I began the dirt bridge, a very long platform from the village all the way to my compound. Once I was done, I got my first villager, 
who willingly volunteered without any issue or fuss. On the way home though, the boat got stuck in the weird dirt, so I couldn't continue the boat ride to freedom for today. Then I had an idea. That's how you know it's gonna be good. I went back to my compound to get a bucket with water. I was going to force him to come or I'll waterboard him. Which, of course, didn't work, but I eventually got him on the bridge and into his nice home at my compound. Day 77, I got the other one on the bridge and into his warm home too. I went back to their village to strip it down and collect all the blocks I wanted. They wouldn't need them anymore anyways, and I can bring parts of their home back to my home. I finished stripping their village the next day and then focused on building them a comfortable home. I was truly focused on making them feel welcomed in my compound. Afterwards, I forced them to have a child, got to start production on my forced villager sales stands right away. Oh, and I got rid of the ugly bridge connecting to my land. The next day I woke up to the surprise of a second child? I needed to move my absolutely massive bamboo farm now. It was time to make room for the villagers stands. I was curious what bamboo was for, and to my surprise, sticks. This entire time I was accidentally making my stick farm without even knowing it, so I immediately went over to make some profits. After a few iterations, I think I made a pretty good sales stand. Might change it up in the future, but I'm not sure. Now this day, day 80, was the most painful. Worse than dying. I started it with abducting one of the parents. One of the kids seemed completely okay with it weirdly enough. And then came the long journey of picking up and putting down the lectern to get the villager to sell me books of mending. After a few attempts, I finally got it. <laughs> then came the pain. One of my stupidest moves ever. I put mending on my sword and pickaxe, which I wanted to do. But then for some odd reason, things weren't clicking for me. I tried to enchant my pickaxe, but thought it was impossible since I put the book amending on it already. So for some stupid reason, I then went and made another diamond pickaxe, wasting three diamonds. I then enchanted it, and then combined it with my mending diamond pickaxe. No idea why I did this, but I did. But then I realized my stupidity. After that, I just spent the night enchanting books because it finally clicked with me how I should enchant my items. Day 81, I just enchanted books. Since I was stupid and used most of my diamonds on enchanting one pickaxe, I spent the day mining for more diamonds. Spoiler, I never found any. Day 83 was special. Not special, but special. I feel like it's better to just show what happened instead of explaining it. Day 84, I finally got the villager and he seemed very pleased to be in his new trading stand. Then I just spent the rest of the day making a few more trading stands. The next day I made a toolsmith and I was going to make another trader but of course the children had to learn from their parents and escape. Then immediately turn back around. For some reason I just had a feeling that they were going to escape again. Which of course they did. All I learned from Minecraft so far is that all villagers deserve the guillotine and none of them are valuable. After getting them all back into the dirt pit, for some reason the parent didn't like it when I hit him. But I finally got him out and into his trading post, and would you look at that, he definitely didn't like it when I hit him. I needed to relax, so I went and enjoyed watching the children freak out in the pit. Since my adventure is almost over, I wanted to have one last run of fun, so I decided to venture out. I'm not sure why I made so much food when I just put fire on my diamond sword and killed animals immediately, but I didn't make it far before I had to go to sleep. As any therapist would say, jumping off a cliff and nearly dying is a great way to start your day. After that I found a jungle. I immediately began exploring it, looking for pandas or at least some parrots. After searching all day, I thought it was over, until I spotted a blue one who sat on my shoulder, then finding his brother and capturing him as well. I spent the entire day 88 searching for a panda. You wouldn't believe how rare these bad boys are. After searching through the entire jungle though and losing hope, I finally spotted him, somehow on an island without bamboo making out with a sheep. Instantly fell in love and tried to take him home. Found out the hard way, they're incredibly slow. Originally, I was going to cut down mountains and mow through trees to bring him home, but after seeing how far I brought him in 8 minutes, I decided to just trap him in a box. But don't worry, I'm not a monster, I left him some food that will grow to feed him. Continuing my adventure and finding some nice loot, I saw another one of those raiding towers. After considering it for three seconds flat, I decided to head over there and try out my first ever raid. Not like I have anything on the line right now. To make them even more angry at me, I stole all their flags and fell asleep in their tower, just to really drive it home. And my first ever raid begins. 
Wave 1 was easy, nothing to write home about. Wave 2 was also easy. I don't think I ever came close to dying during then. Wave 3 I ran out of arrows, so it was time to get up close and personal. It was a close fight between me and the Ravager, didn't think I was going to survive it, but I came out on top. At the end of Wave 4, I lost my comrade. Now, it was getting scary. The final wave had some weirdo stuff going on, some black magic level stuff. I tried to go to sleep but decided against it, then I had a brilliant idea, a level 4319 IQ idea. I would knock the enemies into the lava. So I worked on expanding the lava pit to make it easier to knock them into it. I saw some skeletons and killed them for hopefully some arrows, I got two. I know I could kill the evoker with two of my bow shots, so it was looking up for me. Then, the Ravager charged me. It was time to put my lava pit and skills to test. Of course, his AI pathing wouldn't let him run straight into lava. I also couldn't knock him into it. So, I had to do this the fun way of nearly dying multiple times, blocking and hitting him. But, he finally died. Then, it was time for the Evoker. I hit him once, then missed. Hit the bell to see him through the map and kill them. Almost done, then I killed the last pillager looking at my birds for some reason. Sadly, all villagers died, but I was lucky to still have this flying rat with me. I quickly ran away from the village to sleep. Day 93 and I decided it was time for a horse, finally. Of course, the one I got had to be the slowest one alive. I then found another raid tower and you already know I just had to steal their flags. I think I ended up with 22 total. The rest of the day was spent exploring. Then came Lucky Raid Tower number two. Obviously, I had to cause some chaos, so I stole all their flags too. I even had a farewell party escort me away. Right over the Raid Tower hill though, I found another village. Honestly, nothing special here. I came across another ice biome and I still wanted to find an igloo. I later found out that they don't spawn here, but I did find a couple of ships. So, I just cut my losses and returned to my horse. Now, as much as I love him, I needed a faster horse. This one isn't that much faster, but it's a lot better. I looted one last underwater boat and began to return home. I didn't want to be out in the wild for my 100th day. Day 97, I found this really cool looking village on my way home, so I pillaged it and returned to running. I then witnessed my horse doing unspeakable things to a wolf. You dirty dog, you. I tamed four wolves and found another village to pillage. After traveling for a long time, I finally returned home. I just spent this time putting my animals in their respected spots and putting away items. Oh, and filling up my pumpkin patch and front side of my house with the flags I stole. I think it looks beautiful. You thought that expedition was my last adventure, huh? Well, I told you I was going to return to the nether. I don't know why I did, but I wanted to go back to those blazes and have some fun with them. I then found out that it was two spawners instead of one. Right next to each other. A very rare nether fortress. I stayed so long I went up by three levels, had a blast running around clearing out the area, never actually came close to death, and I ended up with 14 blaze rods. It was time to return home, until I saw two wither skeletons watching my exit. Killed them and a third one wanted some of me. After that I was finally able to return home, and now it's day 100. I finally made it and beat the challenge, I just wanted to relax and not worry for the final day, so I just spent it farming and taking care of my land. I also made some more beds for my villagers and helped them reproduce. After that I just watched the sunset with my pets, and with that, the hardcore Minecraft movie is over.